was introduced by the Spanish 100 years ago from Africa, from Ethiopia. Coffee is not endemic to Colombia. It means like before Spanish, not coffee in, in, the, in the country. Our two main families of coffee in the world, one is Arabica, that come from Africa, and the other one is Robusta, that come from Brazil. But with the time we, we crop the plants, looking for plants more productive uh, and also more resistant. Why? Because the, the consume or the use of coffee has been growing in the world very fast and the production of Arabica and Robusta is not enough to supply the need. So we crave them looking for plants more productive and also more resistant to diseases. In Colombia in the 80s we create three different types of plants. Colombian type, Castillo type and Capito type. They are more resistant, they are more productive but they don't have the same quality as Arabica. <coughs> Arabica is known as the best quality coffee because it has more concentration of caffeine, more nutrients, more, more vitamins, and as a plant itself, it's, it's more like a self-sufficient. Arabica grows in the shade. That means we can plant around bananas, mangoes, avocados, and makes our farm more self-sufficient. We, do, we don't have monocultures. Uh, it's also more eco-friendly. Arabica has just one harvest a year. Then it starts in April with the blooming of the plant and the bean is until November getting ripe. And from November to February we have picking season. So the whole year just for one harvest. <coughs> the new type of plant has two, one at the middle of the year and one at the end of the year. So they have like a better production. In Colombia we grow coffee from 600 meters to 2,600. And we have 11 different regions where we grow coffee. But each region has different characteristics, altitude, weather, type of soil. And depends on that, the coffee will change. So it doesn't matter if it's Arabica, it can taste different here than in the center of Colombia or there's any of the other 10 coffee areas. Like who decide to pick this bean and make a process and make a drink? But it's a <laughs> <laughs> Colombian moments. <laughs> Uh, it's a history that says there was a sheep in Ethiopia and he saw that every time that the goats eat the fruit, their behavior was different, like they became hyperactive. And they drink cardamom tea. So they did the same process that cardamom has with the coffee, and that's how it became a drink. And actually, in, in Middle East, they still drink coffee with cardamom. Vamos a chupar y no morder. Si lo muerden, es amargo. Solo vamos a chupar. we make compost our organic farms that means we don't use chemicals for fertilizer or pesticides it's all natural with the bean we start the process the first step is a selection process because it doesn't matter if the coffee comes from the same plant can have different quality beans and this is because we don't use pesticides some insects attack the bean eat the bean broke the bean so that creates second quality so we're gonna soak it in the, the beans in water and the coffee beans that goes to the bottom, that's first quality coffee, because it's a coffee bean thicker. The ones that float, second quality, that we call pasilla in Colombia. With the second quality, we produce cheap coffee. <laughs> so we open here, it's like a tube above, and all the coffee that is floating gonna go through this canal. With the first quality, the one that sinks, we continue the process. The, the second step is a fermentation process. Why we ferment it? To give the acidity. You know, when you drink the coffee, it's a little acid, it's because of the fermentation. We're gonna leave it in water for one to 15 days. And the sugar that is around, it will decompose, create bacteria, then they will ferment the bean. It's like we, with the beer, with the wine, the sugar is the one that makes the fermentation. Same. For one to 15 days, because depends on the days, uh, the level of acidity will change. 
So each farm decides like the, the taste that they want to give to their coffee. And also, the, the longest that the process takes, the most expensive that it gets. That once that we ferment it, we're gonna let it dry in the sun 10 days. And when the coffee is dry, it's ready to export. Colombia don't roast the coffee and export for two reasons. The first is raw, it's gonna last longer. The coffee, when it's raw, it's gonna last one year and a half in storage. If I roast it, just three, four months. So for companies, it's too expensive to buy coffee every three, four months. So they, they, I say, I don't know, Starbucks, and Nespresso, any company, they buy tons, they have an insertion that do the roasting process little by little. That helps to keep their coffee fresh. The coffee that, that you find at the, at the bully, <laughs> more for butterfly is beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest one in Colombia. Um, the coffee that you find at the supermarket and it says that it like, lasts six months, eight months, is because it already has chemicals to preserve. But organic coffee lasts just three, four months. The other reason and the most important one is flavor. The, co the bean has characteristics. The coffee from this region is fruity flavor. Why? We, we plant fruits around and our type of soil. South part of Colombia is chocolate. The se in the center is citrus. But what it gives the darkness, the bitter, and the smell is a roasting process. <coughs> so each coffee company knows how do you like it. We say a general example, Europeans, you drink espresso, very strong, bitter, in Colombia, we like softer, so companies know we are two different types of markets, then we'll make two different, like the espresso. We have it in Colombia, you have it in Europe, but are very different one of the other. You can put the hand inside and you can feel that it's, it's cold, because some, some beans are still wet. So, they have to be moving the coffee uh, with the legs, so the one that is at the bottom can get dry. I think that here, as you can see, the coffee here, and if you put your hand in the part of the bottom, you'll feel that the coffee is still frozen, still still humid. So they, after the days, they have to move the coffee because the bottom of the bottom will be warm. This is how it looks second quarter. Second quarter coffee. The one that when we passed by the machine, it couldn't take the peel out. And actually, if you come closer, you can see most of the beans are still in the bottom. They're 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 still in the bottom. This is the coffee already dry after the 10 days. And the coffee like this has a second skin that we have to take out. And we have this. And it's the same than this. This is what we call green coffee. This is the way that Colombia sells the coffee. And actually is very popular now because it's healthier. Preserve all the antioxidants, caffeine, it's good to lose weight but doesn't have the same flavor. Coffee just tastes mm -hmm. and it smells when it's roasted. Like this, is like a green tea. Tired. What you got? I, I say a, a roasting process is like kind of like a cooking. Here they do it in that pan with wood. So this is a very small farm, very artisanal. They do, it's a family of like 10, and they do the whole process by themselves, from picking to packaging.